Podcast. My name is Freeway Frank. I am at my house where I've been uh, cooped up for most of the last half year, as have many of you. Thanks for watching this week. Uh, the show is once again in uh, solo session. Uh, that's right. I could have taken out my guitar, uh, even though I don't have one. I do have a keyboard and uh, I am a drummer. <laughs> Whatever that means. I have a drum set. And uh, I play along, okay? And I started playing when I was 14. Long story short, uh, I'm a drummer, but uh, some would say uh, not a very good one, even though others might say a pretty good one. Depends. Depends who you are and how musically inclined you are. Welcome to uh, this week's show and lots to cover this week. I'm going to begin with, well, look at that. Look at that. Here where the show originates from in the province of Quebec, in the beautiful country, still a beautiful country, of Canada. It will always be beautiful, just because some people are trying to ruin it for everybody else. doesn't mean that we're not proud Canadians, that we don't still stand for the national anthem and believe this is a fantastic country, because it truly is. We're going to begin with the Premier of Quebec. Now, I noticed... I was breaking down some of the numbers. The stats are good. They're starting to get you know bigger and bigger in the United States. So I have to explain. The premier of a province, which is like a state in America, would be like the governor, I guess. But we call it a premier. So our, our premier, Francois, Francois, Francois Legault, has now lifted all mandates for March 14th. And uh, no more... Vax passport. It's gone. Now, I was a little excited on my Instagram. Posted some videos of, you know, with Queens, we are the champions. I was just being a little facetious. And um, I got too excited too soon. You know what I'm saying? You know, when you're, you're in a new rela relationship, you're really into somebody... And you get a little too excited and uh, therefore don't perform as well as you can perform. Well, that's basically what I did. I blew a big load is what I'm getting at. And um, I got a little excited because I feel like it's a, it's a victory. I feel like it's a moral victory for many people who have hung in there, many people who were ostracized, dehumanized, stigmatized by media, legacy media, I should say, their governments, their MPs, their neighbors, their family, their friends, people that were made to feel like they weren't human anymore, that they weren't the same people they were prior to this, whatever you want to call it, pandemic. And I truly believe that we came out of this as better people, believe it or not, because our strength for a lot of people who decided to stand their ground, we um, persevered and we did what we believed was right and we lost a lot. We lost a lot and we're not going to get some of the things we lost back like some of those friendships and core family relationships that are now gone because some people decided they weren't into what we were standing up for, which is really sad because I've never been somebody who told someone else not to get vaccinated. I never, you know, truly revealed. I indirectly said that I wasn't interested in taking the shot, but I never came out and actually said it. I said I wasn't interested. I said I'd probably not take it, but I never came out and said anything. People just assumed. And then, you know, they label you an anti-vaxxer. They throw you in the same category. We weren't treated very well. And like I said on my Instagram, I'm going to take out my Instagram right now and the post that I wrote. And what accompanied my post 
was a song by my buddy Ryan McAllister. Now, the title of his song is We Will Rise. But I changed, obviously, the lyrics or the wording. And here's what I wrote. But I used his title. I used the title of his song, We Will Rise Above. So, or it's called We Will Rise. But I, anyway, here, here's what I wrote. To the friends who abandon us, we will rise above. To the media who dehumanized and stigmatized us, we will rise above. To all who unfollowed, attacked, and showed their true colors, we will rise above. To the businesses who closed their doors in our face, we will rise above. To the government that divided us, we will rise above. Originally, I was going to use the word, we will remember. But truthfully, we have to be better than that. So by rising above, I think that says it all. It says it all. And, you know, throwing it in people's faces, albeit I find very entertaining. And um, there's something great about vengeance sometimes, right? As in, in our DNA, it's not all people are born with it, <laughs> but a lot of people uh, can get very vindictive and they like to throw it back in people's faces. And we're all human. I don't think it's necessarily a healthy thing to do. That's why I wrote the words that I wrote, because I truly believe that that is my overall message to a lot of the people out there that turn their backs on us, plain and simple. And some may say, Frank, you're obsessing. You're obsessing, you know, move on, get with it. No, no. I can feel the way I feel. You feel the way you feel. You know, people feel, I don't know who still supports Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, if I could even call him the Prime Minister anymore. This guy's out of control. But I respect anybody's opinion, and I'll have a conversation with anybody. But when people start to get nasty, people start to, you know, to, you know in 2022, the most disrespectful somebody, you know, thing somebody could do is unfollow you and uh, I, listen when it's somebody i don't know i really don't care when it's somebody that i know and it's a former colleague now i've said quite a few things about legacy media so i don't blame some of the people but i never personally attacked anybody who didn't deserve to be attacked <laughs> meaning i went after a couple of people who went after a couple of people that's basically it i don't go after people just for the hell of it but if you if you go after somebody, then it's free game, right? Then we're, uh, then we're going to protect each other. So that's what I did. And there are two specific people that I had no problem throwing under the bus. But besides that, I find it, I find it truly disrespectful when people unfollow, you know, and it's somebody that you know. You get no explanation. They just unfollow you. They don't want to talk to you. They don't want to have a conversation. That says a lot about the person. It really does. It says a lot about the person. It means the person can't handle what you're saying for whatever reason. They either completely disagree with you. They've made up, you know, who you are in their mind. And they truly believe that you've become this demon and this nut job. And they don't want to associate with you. And so they unfollow and move on. But when you have when you have had friendships with these people and you've had work relationships with them and you've treated them very well, for them to do that without an explanation to me is sad. It's truly sad. It truly is. So now here we are. We're a couple of weeks away from the vaccine passports here in the province of Quebec being lifted. We have the premier of the province, our neighbor right next to us, Doug Ford, saying, I don't know what the heck is going on anymore. You know, I, everyone I know is vaccinated and I'm going into stores and some people are vaccinated. How can we tell? Some are not. I mean, it's crazy. We need to move on. And our prime minister is like, uh, you know, on his third or fourth booster. and He's had COVID three times. And I know people who have had COVID two or three times. <laughs> and you're watching this going, whoa, where's this backpedaling coming from but 
what it is is they're looking at the polls because that's their, you know, that's their instant, how do you say it, ratings, right? And that's how they know whether they're going to get voted in again, where their popularity is at. And so there's people, and the majority of the people are vaccinated, who are turning on them. So they realize it's time to backpedal, and now they've all started to backpedal. So how can you trust a government that has easily ended, you know, I mean, they established these passports just like that, you know, just like that. And they stigmatized and went against anybody who didn't want to use the passports or didn't get vaccinated and made them feel, as I said, less of a human being. And just like that, now all of a sudden, because the numbers are good, oh, yeah, the, the numbers are getting better. Bullshit. And all of a sudden now, everything's opening up and all that. So how do people feel who have been following everything the government has said, right? The government has turned you against your neighbors, family members, friends. And now just like that, out of the wild, you know, blue yonder, everything is eliminated. You can't be feeling too good right now. Now, I understand that these passports might come back at some point. Of course, you know, unless they completely eliminate them, I understand they might come back again in the next wave or in the fall or in the winter. In my opinion, this never ends. I don't feel like it will. There'll be something new. It'll get worse and worse. But doesn't it make you feel dirty? Do you not feel a little dirty? And I'm, and I'm not criticizing people who felt a need to follow exactly what the government said. That's your decision. But you must feel a little dirty now because now all of a sudden, everything you had to do to comply, to be a member of society, you no longer have to do. And everybody who didn't comply is just like you again. Just like that. No questions asked. You know why? Because it was wrong from the beginning. It was wrong from the beginning. And most of the people are starting to figure it out. And I say most of the people who have been vaccinated, no, now. They've been taken for a ride. And I'm not saying that the vaccine doesn't work, kind of works. That's not up to me to decide. I'm saying they realize now, looking back, and what they've done in order to get their lives back, we're all at the same place two years later. Now, some of these people might say, yeah, but if it wasn't for us getting vaccinated, we wouldn't be here. Again, I say, bullshit. Because we're here nonetheless. And we would have been here nonetheless in this exact spot, in my opinion. In my opinion, we would have been here in this exact spot regardless of whether they close down society. And again, I'm not saying advocating for or against taking the vaccine, but I'm talking about lockdowns, restrictions, masking kids, masking people, closing down society for two years. In the end, complete and utter failure and i'd say we told you so but i don't think we have to go there but as i said dirty now dirty oof dirty i feel dirty i don't know why i feel dirty i feel dirty for the people who should be feeling dirty it's just dirty dirty now right so as of today at the time of the recording of this podcast yesterday you don't show a vaccine passport, you can't go buy alcohol. Today, drop. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. No questions asked. You should be really pissed. People should be really pissed. And let me tell you, deep down inside, they're questioning. They're questioning, and they're like, what the fuck do we do all this for? What do, what do we do all this for? That's it? Just like that? No, I want the vaccine passports back, and I want those people who didn't comply, didn't participate, to be punished. 
Ah. Uh. Some people, they're so indoctrinated. They're so, they're so far gone. They drank the Kool-Aid. They think we drank the Kool-Aid. I don't know. I'm still here. And never downloaded the app. Arrive can, never downloaded that. Never went to a quarantine hotel. Never participated in the bullshit. Still here. Just like you. Oh, I'm making enemies. Still making enemies, but I don't care because it had to be said. So, here we are in the month of February. You would imagine by springtime, at some point, the Canadian government has to lift the restrictions on travel. You would imagine that's coming up, but, you know, Justin Trudeau, he loves power. And everyone in the world is making fun of him. That's, that's the crazy part. You have lefties, centrists, righties. Everybody's making fun of this guy. I haven't heard anybody lend their support. No leader has come out. You ever notice? No leader has come out besides their own party, the liberals. No leader has come out to give Justin Trudeau. You're on your own, buddy. <laughs> that's because he's drowning. That's why. And nobody's throwing him the rope. And he's doing it to himself. Because this week, invoking emergency powers, you know, for the first time since 1988, the Emergency Act was activated. And for what? What? I mean, this has set an ugly precedent, in my opinion, because if they could deem anybody a terrorist, including their own citizens, right, or any movement, not a legit one, um, they could do that to any protest, any peaceful protesters outside. And the next thing you know is they'll be freezing all of our bank accounts because they suspect, you know, maybe I say something that Trudeau doesn't like, we'll freeze Frank's account. This other person says something he doesn't like, we'll freeze their bank account. We'll make it hard for these people to live. I mean, that's what's coming next with the internet, with the internet bill. That's what that's what they want, right? They want. It's like it's almost uh, as crazy as the sound sounds. It's it's a authoritarian democracy. <laughs> so we elect these nut these nut jobs, right? And then they're actually uh, despots, and uh, they rule over the people. Bigger government, uh, less freedoms. This is what's happening right before our eyes. It's as clear as day to a lot of people. It's clear to me. Some people, I'm not sure. Still taking way too many naps during the day. I don't get it, how you cannot see what's going on. And the worst part about this is, you know, the media is in an obvious collusion with the Canadian government because you never hear the other side of the story, ever. Ever. I've never seen them go down and speak to truckers and interview them and tell their story. No, it's all fringe media and new media that's been doing that for us. And I, I thank those people, those Canadians personally, for doing that. Because without that voice, unless you go down to Ottawa, like many people have, you don't see the truth. It's not, you know, derogatory signs everywhere and racist people who are down there and that's a whole bunch of hogwash i don't think i've ever used the word hogwash in my life but there it is it's bullshit it's a peaceful movement and the prime minister invoked the emergency act for what dangerous you know why because he's a narcissist he's out of control and this is his last attempt you know, he's the pilot of a plane, and it's circled the airport a couple of times, and the landing gear is not, is not coming down. The landing gear has never worked for Justin Trudeau. But I feel for, you know, when this happens to an actual pilot, and they need to think quick, what are they going to do? Well, in this case, as I said, the Prime Minister of Canada 
has just realized he needs to ditch the plane in a place where the less damage is done and this is his last effort of getting out of this which 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 by the way is a very miscalculated last ditch effort for the prime minister this is in my opinion what crackpots do okay he's a crackpot he's lost he's lost his mind i don't know how else to put it but this guy has lost his mind and anyone who doesn't see this I mean, even when he speaks as i said the whole world is laughing when you have the biggest liberals in the world making jokes they know it's over for it's and then you have freeland the deputy prime minister christia whatever her name is next did you see her i mean i look i've had panic attacks myself in the past she said she was having a panic attack right behind him with the mask on maybe she had a hard time breathing maybe she should take off the mask because it's over and uh we don't mask no i mean come on let's be honest with the masks so i don't know if she wasn't getting the right amount of oxygen in her lungs but she looked like she was having a panic attack on television and she was because i don't think she was comfortable I don't think she was comfortable with what her own her own leader was was saying and she knew this is it we're at the crossroads here this is where it all comes falling down it is nuts to me what has happened in the last and 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 anybody who who doesn't want or doesn't have the time because you know they have families and they're focusing in on their own lives and what's going on. They don't have time to drive to Ottawa. Well, you need to find other sources of information then than just your regular six o'clock news because they're not telling they're not telling the truth. They're not. And it is beyond for me, it is beyond comprehensible what the Liberal Party of Canada is doing, and the NDP, by the way, who voted along with them. It's just completely nutty. This thing is over. They need to lift all mandates. What is he hanging on to? Right? Is he is he does he realize that the truckers are not terrorists? I know he's labeled them terrorists, but this is not like back in the day when US presidents would say, We don't negotiate with terrorists. That's what you do when you're negotiating with actual terrorists and uh, actual enemies. The Prime Minister of Canada has forgotten that uh, these are Canadian people and they have uh, grievances and they're there because they want to discuss. You know, you don't want to sit down because your ego's out of control, Justin. Well, let somebody else in your party sit down with, with these people and let's move on. You've done nothing. You've done nothing but label them as the worst scum of the earth, bad people, extremists, white nationalists, and every other name in the book. By doing that, he's divided Canadians. Some Canadians who actually, you know, gave him the vote will vote for him again because I don't know how much money this guy has given to, to to these people. These people are okay with everything Justin Trudeau says, mind you. In a parliamentary system, not a very popular prime minister. The numbers are there. He, he you know, he barely squeaked in. And he's hanging on. He's just hanging on. It's over. My prediction is it's over for the prime. I mean, this guy is done. He he just committed political suicide by invoking the emergency act. It was over. The minute he, he even thought about it, Fini, done. Who who still I mean, I don't understand if there was an election today. Who's still voting for this guy? Who's who's like who honestly Votes would vote for these people. They're absolutely out of control. They're power hungry. And and watching question period, I don't know what I'm watching. It's it's a sideshow. You know, this the the speaker is just trying to control both sides. There's yelling and rowdiness and nobody can speak. And the Prime Minister of Canada never answers a question. I don't think he's ever answered. I've never heard him answer a question. It's crazy. He won't answer 
questions that are actually great questions by other media sources that infiltrate the press conferences, and he'll never answer those questions. Legitimate questions? No, unless they go along with his narrative. He'll never ask questions. He'll never answer questions from the opposition. He'll always blame the conservatives for politicizing. And I'm not saying the, the conservatives don't politicize for their own, you know. We know everybody's doing what they're doing for their own, for own, their own gains. I understand how it works. But this guy needs to answer some questions here and give us a, a date. They voted against the motion. He doesn't want to come up with a... What's the plan? When are we getting out of... The, when? Give us an answer. Do regular everyday Canadians... Everyone I know wants, wants to know what's, what's the date. How do we get out of this? All these provinces are lifting their mandates. When is the Canadian government going to do the same? Can we not get a date? Some kind of game plan? Nothing? He doesn't want to answer any questions. This guy's unbelievable. This guy's... You know who he is? He's, uh, he's O.J. Simpson. That's who, yeah. that's, that's who Justin Trudeau is. O.J. Simpson. Minus the team of lawyers that got him off. O.J. Simpson. Do I have to even go? This is what Ju Justin Trudeau, right, is like O.J. Simpson convinced himself. He convinced himself, first and foremost, that he didn't do it. When the entire world... Knows he did it, okay? The entire world, minus like 10 people who are still drinking the Kool-Aid. Everybody knows OJ did it. And it's the same thing with Justin Trudeau. Everybody knows this guy's out of control, right? This guy's a true despot, true narcissist. Even the way he speaks, nobody likes the guy. He's the most unpopular prime minister of my lifetime. Everyone knows it, okay? You could only talk about his good looks for so long. He's not even that good looking. Let's be honest. All right? So, I always say, if he was walking down the street and he wasn't Justin Trudeau, wasn't a prime minister of Canada, would you give him that a second or third glance? Probably not. I don't get the second glance. People might give me more attention because they might know, ah, oh, I remember this guy from somewhere. But bottom line, it's not like he stands out. He's no America's next top model. Sorry to tell you. So that can only go so far. Ah, we have a political figure. He's so good looking. And look at him. And he's just the, he embodies what Canada is about. Bullshit. No, it's over. That lasted one summer in 2014. He got elected. I never voted for him, by the way. I could see the smugness coming from a mile away. And here we are. This guy's still in power. He does whatever he wants. You see all the memes online and all the jokes and, you know, the, um, the other dictators around the world <laughs> who love what Justin Trudeau is doing because, you know, they're taking away the spotlight from them and they get to get away with stuff. Meanwhile, because Trudeau's... <laughs> Trudeau's in the limelight. He's doing it all. He's doing it all. And they're like, bro, you see the the, the memes out there. They're funny. Bro, bro. <laughs> this is this guy for real. He's a joke. He's a la he's the laughing stock. This guy will never be able to walk around the street, any street in Canada ever again. He's done. He's done. He will be heckled for life. God knows what else might happen. And it's, it's kind of sad, actually, just because the guy is like a smug narcissist and we don't like him. You know, I'm against people throwing shit at the prime minister and rocks like they did during last year's election and stuff. I don't like that stuff. I know people are mad, but I'm, I'm, I'm a pacifist. So I'm against any type of violence, but this guy will never be able to walk down the street again. You think when he wins the next election, he's going to go to the Metro like he always does in his riding of uh, St. Michelle here in the Montreal area and speak to his con in, uh, his uh, constituents? And uh, Yeah, okay. <laughs> Good luck with that. Man. First of all, I don't think he'll... I, th I think he's done. I don't even think he'll make it. But then again, who knows? I wanted to mention a couple of more uh, little 
side stories about what's happening in um, in media with with some people specifically that I have worked with in the past or or know or have been you know former radio colleagues, not necessarily in the same building, but that have made the news. And I say news. What is news anymore? Kid Carson is a radio, a morning radio host, and was a morning radio host in Vancouver at a radio station I worked at for many years when I was in Vancouver. We were never there at the same time, but I've uh, I've always respected him. He's he's a big talent. And last week, or about a week and a half ago, he went on the air. Now, a lot of people say that, or well, he even said it, that his contract was coming to an end. So don't be, you know, understand that he knew exactly what was coming down. He knew the axe was falling, and he took the opportunity. What a brilliant move to do what he did. It was the perfect timing for him to say how he felt about the Freedom Convoy. And... um they parted ways, which is a nice way radio and television sends you off into the horizon. Okay, technically, it, the word should be they fired you, right? But it's parted ways. Well, you parted ways because you don't see eye to eye. Therefore, I employ you, and um, I don't want you to be my employee anymore. You're gone. What parting of ways? <laughs> it's, it wasn't my calling. It just happened. You get what I'm saying? So, kid went on the air one morning about a week and a half ago and pledged his loyalty to the Freedom Convoy and said how he couldn't live with himself and see himself continuing to do everyday morning radio talking about the frivolous things that you know morning radio shows talk about i was part of it for many years too you know do you like your toast toasted like you know on five or are you a light uh, toaster and do you put bread or cream cheese on like all this stupidity right but you can't talk about real things god forbid you have an opinion on something everybody's talking about so he was tired with all basically the bullshit of mainstream and said he couldn't live with himself if he couldn't come out and say exactly how he felt. And it's crazy how the media twisted and turned his his words, made him out to be this anti-vaxxer and just lunatic, which he's not. But look, he took the opportunity and he's no idiot. And he made it work for himself and he launched, you know, his podcast immediately after and mentioned to everybody that his podcast would probably be next because they were probably going to get rid of him. And that's exactly what happened. Brilliant. And, you know, a lot of jealous people in radio, of course, because maybe deep down inside, they've always wanted to do that and, and hold the middle finger to, you know, the establishment and the corporate media world. And they see that and a lot of people can't handle that. So... You know, they just go along with the same narrative that everybody else goes along with, that he must be crazy, he must be an anti-vaxxer, and he crossed the line, and who does he think he is, and all this stuff. Meanwhile, what he did, in my opinion, was great. Great, great. Why not? They're going to fire you and get rid of you anyway, okay? And then they're never going to let you say goodbye on the air. It happened to me. Out of the blue, boom, they get rid of you. And... They, you don't get to say goodbye. So these are people that for for years tell you how important you are to the audience, how you need to share stories with them, how you need to connect. And then one day they get rid of you and they wipe you off the face of the earth and their websites and their social medias like you never existed. Right? So Kid Carson got the last laugh and he'll be fine, but he'll never work in media. I mean, I doubt he'll work in media again, just like, I'll never work in media again, but I don't think he wants to work in media again, just like I don't want to work in media again. That's what people need to understand. I get messages sometimes by complete yahoos, and they say stuff like, you'll never work in the media again. Did you ever think for a second that, you know, think about it. 
put two and two together. Maybe I don't want to work in media. I'll answer that. I don't ever want to work in media the way it is right now. It's vile. It's vile. It's unethical. What they do is completely wrong. It's distorted. And as I said, when you're in bed with the Canadian government, well, you're only going to look out for yourself. And these big corporations, they only look out for themselves. If you've ever got let go by a big corporation, or even when you sign any kind of agreement with a company, they're protected. Their lawyers have, have gone through everything. You know, anything you want changed in the contract, they'll never change. Because it's like, take it. Sign, accept, or don't work with us. But they're fully protected and you never fully are. So that's how it works. And at the end of the day, there are a lot of people growing tired of legacy media. And people who are in the industry right now that are about to flip, I speak to them. Some of them are former colleagues. Some of them are friends. Some are people who can't handle it anymore because of the mistreatment and years of, it really is, years of mental abuse. They abuse you. It's like you're in a bad relationship and they're the abuser and they'll do everything to play these mind games with you and they'll even program the people that are your boss to think this way. I don't even know if these people know they're indoctrinated to the point where they become such assholes that they treat people so badly for a paycheck, you know, and we all did it. You know, some people will say, well, you took a paycheck for 30 years in, in radio. Yes, I did. It was my livelihood. It was my livelihood. I get why some people are still in it. But now, it's been exposed more than ever. And when I was in it, I wasn't happy. There were things, so many things I wasn't happy about when I was in media. And I would come home depressed sometimes and tell my wife, I can't do this anymore. You know how many times I almost quit? I understand that people keep doing it for a paycheck, but it comes to a point at some point when your integrity and your pride and everything you believe in in is compromise that you just have to do the right thing and people are starting to do it and i know several other people who will remain nameless who are in the process of standing up for themselves against these evil vile corporations who take advantage and abuse their employees that's what they do the entity is abusive okay and anybody who's worked in under this umbrella of people, it's, it's almost like they all drink the Kool-Aid, then you all drink it together. And I've drank it. I've done things on the air in my years in radio that I didn't want to do, that I didn't want to say. And I was told many times, I'm telling you, as God is my witness, I don't even know how religious I am, but, and I was told many times, Frank, if, if you don't do this, somebody else will. It's horrible. It really is horrible. And I have the proof. And I always say I have the proof, okay? And that's why these people that are still left over in radio and still doing it, they know. They know I have the proof. And they would look so horrible if I came out with this stuff and, and just exposed what they're really about. It's horrible what they do. It's horrible what they're willing to do for entertainment and the person that gets ripped off in the end is always the listener or the viewer because they have no idea what's going on and they build relationships with these personalities and then one day these personalities disappear in some cases legend i'm not putting myself in a legendary category but in many cases legendary personalities who are treated like shit and shown the door and then you wonder why they come out after a while and you know they have, they say what they say against these companies. It's not because they're bitter. People sort of think, ah, oh, you're just bitter. I used to think that too. Ah, just bitter. Yeah, because you're still in it collecting the paycheck. And yeah, those people are just bitter. But then when it happens to you and you're mistreated and they play mind games with you and they treat you like literally like a piece of crap, then it's okay, right? Well, yeah, because it's happened to you. It is very personal. It affects you mentally. And that never goes away. It has to end. All this stuff has to end. We need to keep calling out all these people, governments, media, 
people in big positions and make them realize what they're doing is wrong. Treat people well. Be respectful to your neighbors. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Don't try to control people. Because that's what's happening now more than ever. It's trying to control the narrative, trying to control how people think, trying to control people's choice dehumanizing people who don't feel the same way as you. Well, look, some people, people who were born in a certain part geographically are not going to think the same way you did. If someone grew up at church every Sunday, they're going to have different views than you have regarding some, some topics. It's just normal. And it's easy to just turn on them and say, ah, homophobe, racist, whatever the case is, but maybe try to understand where these people are coming from and how these people were brought up. It doesn't mean you have to agree with them, but have a conversation. That's something that I've been trying to do in the last year, is trying to understand that even though I have certain thoughts about things, it doesn't make people who have thoughts about things bad people, unless they're you know, outright racist and horrible people. That's a different story. Most of the time, they're not. They're not. They just have their beliefs about certain things, okay? And as I said, as long as those beliefs are not racist, but they believe in their God or whatever, their religion and all that, you can't force people to think a certain way just because you're this liberated person that thinks the way you think and that makes everybody else not as intelligent as you or not as good as you. That's the problem, though, is that everybody thinks they're better than the other person. That's wrong. So, there's the word again. So, <laughs> governments govern by the polls and what the numbers and what the people are saying. And the narrative has turned. Therefore, drop all mandates. Let's get back to normal. We can't do this forever. That's what they're saying now. And now... Life goes back to normal, you would think. Until the next time this happens again. I think it's important we all work on relationships that were severed during the, the pandemic. Yes, but at the same time, there are a lot of hurtful feelings. There's a, there are a lot of people that are hurt. And some people that will never reach out and never try to fix those relationships. I'm always the type of person, I am open to speaking to anybody and working on moving on. But you don't forget. You don't forget. Especially when you were treated so badly for just having an opinion on something that is dear to your heart. It's crazy to me how the government has turned people against each other and how we got to this point. But that's how easily it's done when you have an uncontrollable government or a government, I should say, that's out of control and completely... into having the power, narcissistic. They truly believe, well, I was elected. I'm the leader. I'm your supreme being. I rule you. I've been put in this position. No, it doesn't work like that for the hundredth time. We've said it so many times. You're elected by the people for the people. You're not elected by the people to control them. That's what cult leaders, you know, cult leaders do. The Branch Davidians, David Koresh's. I don't want David Koresh as my prime minister. I don't want Kim Jong-un as my prime minister. I don't think anybody does. You know, the jokes, the comparisons to other dictators of the past, dictators that they can have family ties to, 
personally, I've grown tired of those those things, right? Because it takes away from what is really happening. We want to destroy people, you know, based on what we believe they're about. But the task at hand is very simple. What we need to do is not vote these people back in and teach them a lesson and remind them they're just like us. And now they've lost the mandate, the mandate to rule and be in the ruling party because they've crossed the line. So we need to hold them accountable. And where does that happen? Only at the ballot box. That's it. And we make sure this never happens again. We have the right people in power who will listen to all Canadians. Every single one of us, no matter what. No one's better than anyone else. And this has caused so much division. We need to stop and we need start to start being good to each other. Because we're so divided. We've been more divided than ever. And who's caused the division? The political spectrum has caused the division. I think we all need to think less about what party we belong to and just what the good ideas are. What are the good ideas? Take a good idea from here and a good idea from here and a good idea from there. And I kind of like this leader and I kind of like this person and I don't like this person all that. Instead of saying, you know, I'm all in with the conservative party. I'm all in with the PPC. I'm all in with the NDP or the liberals or the OPP and the VD and you know me. and That's not... It doesn't work like that anymore, you know? It's it's kind of like the days of working a nine-to-five job. That's not the world we, we live in anymore. Like, it's, it's not just a nine-to-five job anymore. And it's not just you sign up to work for a company like our parents did and you work for the same company for 40 or 50 years. Things have changed. We need to get with the times. Things have changed across all spectrums. So... This I'm a card carrying member bullshit doesn't work anymore. Let's hold whoever the leader is of any party accountable. And if they come up with some good ideas and it's not necessarily a party that you would ever affiliate yourself with, then you could say, well, that, that's good. I like that. I, I can work with that. And that's how we all work together. And that's how we get past this instead of being divided by politics because that's all it is now. More than ever, that's what, that's what they do. Thanks for watching this week's Drive-By Podcast. Thanks for listening on all our platforms. We're on Apple. We're on Amazon. We're on Spotify. I say we're because there's a lot of people that are usually involved and help me out with this. Lately, when I do solo sessions, it's just me, of course, but a lot of people to thank. Thank you for being a part of this. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, click the like bu button on YouTube. And as I said, we're across all the audio platforms, pretty much uh, every single one of the main ones, and love to hear your feedback and hear from you on the other side. Thank you so much for watching the drive-by this week, and we'll catch you again next week. I will have a guest in studio, followed by another guest a week later. So the guests are returning as the world returns to normal. Sure hope so. Thanks, guys. This is The Drive-By with Freeway Frank.